What's happening, Josh? How are you doing? I'm great, mate. How are you? How is isolation? Oh, it's tough. Like, I just, I can't wait for the government to just get back to us and say, what's happening? Yeah, it's a lot, a lot sitting around, but we all have to do our bits staying inside, so it's, I have to keep the positives going and getting a new daily routine, new flu, and that sort of stuff. Yeah, I'm lo- absolutely loving the video. <laughs> like, it, the others sit, have so much fun just going, like... I'll tell you what, it's actually getting, it's all right. It was fine when it started growing up. It started growing up when I was in Finland, and I was able to go, like, everyone's at barbers and get trimmed and stuff and get the hair trimmed and that sort of stuff. And then I just got a cut before I came home um, from Finland, and then... Sort of in the big boom of everyone, like, oh, no, I need to get my hair cut here. I was panicking. And all I was just standing there being like, oh, no, don't have to worry about that at all. And then <laughs> five weeks later, I'm like, mm, maybe I should have gone and got my hair cut while I had the chance again. But do you have a razor? Do you have like anything to like give yourself in it? Two weeks ago, I ordered one on Amazon, but it's been out of stock because everyone obviously panic bought them. So I'm waiting until <laughs> they arrive on the 15th of May. So, <laughs> just, um, so you're said said a bit about Finland there. So where were you on Erasmus and like what happened? Like, talk, talk me a bit about your experience and then how it came to an unfortunate end. Yeah, so I was in uh, Turku in Finland, which is just west of Helsinki. So capital is Helsinki, and then Turku's um, the next city over. Uh, so I was there for two months. I was supposed to be there until the end of May, but obviously because everything got turned upside down with what's going on had come home early um, along with all those other Erasmus students but yeah I was there studying doing um, education there so I was working in a local school in Turku which was absolutely amazing like to see the resources they have and the way they go towards teaching and education was really really interesting but yeah so I was over there we were loving life and um, I was there with Sophie and Laura and we we're having a really, really good time. It was absolutely amazing. Well, the cold, like how, how cold was it? Like, what was the weather like? Was it absolutely freezing? So this year was quite unfortunate for them because they didn't really get the winter they normally get. So it was maybe about six, seven degrees. It was quite the same as at home. But um, we travelled up north um, even further. It was down to minus 20, minus 25. So it was pretty, pretty chilly at times. so <laughs> cold. Minus yeah. 20? yeah. It was mad, absolutely crazy. We got we travelled with um, like a student organisation. We all got these buses, seventeen hour coach up north. And uh, we went to Santa's village and we were staying in the ski resort. And it was minus twenty, and we'd all been on the bus overnight for seventeen hours, obviously. And we were like, "Oh, this is fine," like because we we left in seven degrees, so it was like quite quite warm. We were wearing a jacket and, and jeans. We got off the bus at the service station to like get snacks, and everyone absolutely just died. Oh it was my so days. <laughs> so then obviously you were sent home so how was that experience like was, was, does Finland have much of COVID-19 or like what was the situation like over there so at the time it was um to me it wasn't a very panicky situation uh, compared to other parts of the world just from reading the news and seeing what was going on um, and they didn't have that much of a spread of the, the virus or um, coronavirus um, then when I was leaving. But shortly after, like two or three days after I left, they shut down the country completely, just closed the borders. So they sort of just um, lay low for a couple of weeks there. And they're still, still like, you can't travel anywhere within Finland. You can't really do much. Everything's closed, similar to here. You're in isolation. I think they still... Possibly you can still like meet up in groups of ten was the law at the time. You could was the biggest amount of people you could be with, but you no, know, they've they've really clamped down and stuff. So if it stayed, it wouldn't be much better than, than coming home. So I'd rather be home in my own house if you know what I mean. So Yeah, and it was probably Oh Ooh. Someone bring me. <laughs> I gotta decline that. that. was a bit random. Sorry for anyone who <laughs> Listening in the call, someone was ringing me there. Um, so yeah, talking about Finland. Um, so you're obviously sent home, sent home, and that's it. So before you went to Finland, you were, or while you were in Finland, sorry, you were actually named next year's vice president of the students' union. Yeah, uh huh. I haven't actually spoke to you since that. So well done, me for getting that. Thank you very much. Um, 
next year is looking like it's going to be maybe a different year for Stranwell Students Union. Uh, how do you feel about your hopes and dreams for next year and like working alongside Johnny or like have you got any like message at all for the students ahead of next year? Like what's going to happen? Um, yeah, so Johnny and I have been sort of communicating just back and forth, um, just casually, just chatting about how you're doing and that sort of stuff. But um, it is going to be a very different year because nobody knows what's actually going to happen. So it's making it hard to plan. And some of the guys and who are also exec were saying, well, not what's happening, but we're sort of asking, is this going to be happening? Is that going to be happening? Um, it's hard because Johnny doesn't know either. No one knows. So yeah. we're sort of planning as much as we can to make it the best year it can be. And it will be a great year. Um, but just events will be adapted to be suitable for the times we're in. And like the students union is still going to be the students union. It's still going to be the place where all the fun, all the banter. We're still going to have the great charity events. So no one should be panicking. We're not going to be going and hiding away or anything. It's, <laughs> we're still coming out in full force to make the best year for the students. So yeah, I'm, I'm looking forward to it. I think. It's quite like when you're on Erasmus, you're like, oh, no, I don't want to go home. And now I'm home. I'm just, I just want the year to start again in September so we can get going with something back into every team. Yeah, so yeah. I'm looking forward to getting back into, into Strand and getting some work done and just some normality again, that sort of thing. Yeah. I think people at Strand Mills will come together a lot more mm -hmm. than they have done in the past. Like, I, 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 I'm trying to prepare what I'm going to say like I'm going to I'm planning some kind of message my final message to the students um come the end of the month and I'm kind of thinking I, I'm hoping and dreaming for Sean Mullis when I return to Sean Mullis again when we are back to some sense of normality I think it'll have to be a better Sean Mullis um which is kind of fun to think and dream about um here mate one of my best one of the best memories I've had being president is like within the first week oh no <laughs> do you want to tell do you want to tell the super story to, to people <laughs> what actually happened okay so um basically chris was getting settled into his office and um he was starting everyone knows, everyone's heard of strand tv so he was starting off strand tv and i was sort of planning a wee bit with him and give him a hand with that and uh, we were standing in the student's union office and we thought oh well there's there's nowhere for students to sit if they're like coming to buy tickets or um get like hoodies or that sort of stuff. So we're sitting there, and I was like, here, Chris, it would be really good if we had a sofa and the students <laughs> to sit on. So Chris and I, I mean, two absolute planks, thought, oh well, there's loads of sofas around the Strand. So basically, <laughs> we went down to the students' union, saw this really nice copy sofa. There was like hundreds of sofas around there, you know, well not hundreds, but you know, and I thought, well, okay, well. There's definitely like around, like there's definitely like twenty sofas in scholars. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so yeah, there's twenty twenty sofas in scholars. I thought, okay, well, it's scholars that use by the student union, it's fine. Well, one will bring one up and if it's needed for the event, we'll bring it back down. So here's Chris and I absolutely like st stressing about like, carrying this massive sofa. <laughs> oh, you're trying to get today. <laughs> Sorry, man, there it's dude who's ringing me. It's actually funny. He's actually ringing me. It's someone from Strand Millis. It's it's Gav, a security guard. Look, he wants his sofa back. He wants his sofa back. <laughs> <laughs> Not good. Um, sorry about that. So, sofa, yeah. No, yeah. Busy. Chris and I got the whole way to the door of the students' union after carrying the sofa from boy from scholars to be turned around to say, oh, you can't take sofas from scholars and have to carry the whole thing back again. Oh, it was, it was just hilarious that me and you just carrying the sofa the whole way around campus. Like, I, I thought it was one of the funniest things. Like, that's one of my funniest memories, being present. <laughs> yeah. And I got a phone call being like, you can't take sofas around. Oh, no. <laughs> Not I mean, I'm, I'm so happy. Like, it was class work with you and stuff. Um, but what are you, what are you doing during um, isolation then? What, what have you been up to? Basically, um, <laughs> I was doing work since I came home from work because all, all the um, Erasmus just sort of stopped, but yeah. the, work, the work goes on. So I've had online lectures, which has been pretty crazy on, on Zoom. Um, but it's worked well, and then just keeping active, been out on the bike, um, yeah. cycling a bit here and there, and then a bit of music and 
drumming, that sort of stuff, keeping myself busy. Like, I suppose you don't want to be sitting around doing nothing. Yeah. But then you can't go anywhere, so you're like, oh, I might as well just sit down and do nothing today. But you need to get, like, it's better if you're in, a, for me, it's better if you're in, like, a bit of a routine and you're active and busy. That's what we'll, we'll be, like, to finish off this week, chat, it's been, it's been class to catch up with you, Josh, but finish this off. How would you say to all students, what will be your top tip for during this lockdown isolation for students to try and keep themselves busy? Um, stay connected because we're in social isolation, but we're not in social isolation. We're in isolation in proximity of each other. So we're not supposed to be close together. So the idea is that's not like, you don't just like dig a hole in the ground and hide in it for a couple of months and don't talk to anyone. That's really, really bad idea. <laughs> don't do that. <laughs> don't turn into them all. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, stay connected with everyone. Like, reach out to someone. If, if you haven't talked to them in six months, nothing to do with the isolation. Send them a message. How are you doing? What's happening? That sort of stuff. I'm on a quiz on Saturday night to people I haven't seen in maybe three or four years. And it's the funniest thing ever, just catching up. Because, like, when you're at uni, you're busy. You're always working on the latest thing. This is what I have to do now. Whereas at the minute, we've got time to sit back and just sort of, oh, well, well who am I going to phone today? That sort of thing. Or you have time to sit and chill and get nostalgic about old memories of carrying sofas around Strand. So <laughs> It's time to pause, as you said. And yeah, I think like we'll never get this time in our lives again where we'll just be able to sit and chill there'll always be something on so mm -hmm. yeah josh here is absolutely class thank you for that this morning hope i brightened your day a bit more <laughs> yeah. um, and thank you so much for everything that you've given to strand mills this year being part of the exec and i'm sure you're gonna make a great vice president next year thank you very much all right man <laughs>